Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hello Dave. Uh, we're gonna start quickly with an update on the whole 100k thing. By the time this Hello Dave is out, the 100,000 subscriber celebration event is officially over. That means the merchandise should be off the store and all the winners of the giveaways that have been running over the last two weeks should have been drawn. I just want to say, if, uh, if you want the lucky winners, first, congratulations. Secondly, if I haven't reached out to you yet, don't worry. I will get to you. I have more than 20 winners that I need to reach out to individually, get information so we can get everything shipped. There is quite a bit of work in it. Uh, I will get to you. Don't worry if I haven't reached out to you yet. I will get to you. Be patient and I'll get to you within the next couple of days. But let's move on to some of the real news. Um, I want to talk about Frontier and the information flow that they are sending out towards us, the community and the player base. Last week's um, Frontier livestream, they announced that the livestreams will be changing the schedule from being bi-weekly, meaning every other week, to being once per month. Those who have been around for a bit will remember that these livestreams, when they kind of rebranded and redid them after Odyssey, they were originally a, a once per week thing that then got reduced to yeah, the bi-weekly thing we've had for a while now, and now we're down to, uh, to once per month. They give the explanation, the same explanation they said last time, basically that they want to make them more information dense, and that's why, since there's just not enough information to share, they just don't want to have the live streams as often, so they're doing them less frequently, because there's just no news coming out for, uh, for Elite Dangerous, and uh, not enough at least that they can actually cover a two- Two hour, I think it's a two hour live stream every other week. Same things kind of happened with the Discovery Scanner, but it's gone a lot more under the radar. Um, the Discovery Scanner posts, if you guys read them, it's it was like a weekly thing, like every Monday, uh, Frontier, they've doing this like every single Monday for a while now. They've been posting these Discovery Scanner, which is essentially a lot of the same information that we saw in the live streams that were just compressed into a written article where they would go and talk about. Uh, what the news are is happening both with Elite from, from, from their perspective, but also what's happening in the community, highlighting some cool community things, those kind of things. Usually they were posted once every Monday. The last one we saw was in March. End of March was the last one I think we saw. Let me just double check that actually. Yes, the last Discovery Scanner was posted on the 27th of March. And that means that we are now three weeks in a row where we haven't gotten one where we usually got one. This has got a lot more on the radar, but this is likely the same thing. There's just not enough information. There's not enough new stuff. There's not enough happening with Elite that they can basically make a, a sensible post. They say they will still make these posts whenever it makes sense. So basically they will probably return around larger updates, um, but we're not going to get this weekly information flow um, anymore. Also from the community team, we of course have had Bruce, who has been part of the Elite Dangerous community team for, for a while now. He is leaving the team. Um, he is staying with Frontier, he's still working at Frontier. He's just been uh, reallocated internally to, uh, to other projects. So I'm expecting he's going to be community managing one of their other games. Which one, I don't know, but he's going to be moved someplace else. Um, so we're now down to, uh, to a significantly smaller team than, uh, than we used to. Now, all this reduction in, in information flow and, and less people on the community team and all that, um, of course, it sparked some, some, some discussions whether this is basically Frontier slowly beginning to, um, to close down Elite, if you will. Um, and Frontier has commented on it, and they have said, and I quote, that this will not reflect future lifespan decisions on Elite, end quote. And it's a funny, <laughs> it's a funny wording that it says that it will not reflect future lifespan decisions on Elite. Well, you could you could argue that will have if the decision has already been made to to slowly ramp down uh, Elite and and basically slowly put it into maintenance mode, which this does kind of feel like. Well, if the decision's already been made, you could argue that it won't really make any changes to the decision. I don't know. Anyway, it's, um, I will admit it does look a little bleak for Elite. Um, it's really sad. I'm, I don't know. I really enjoy the game. It's a good game, but it also feels, it feels like it is slowly getting to a point where Frontier is slowly like ramping down, getting into a more, um, what's going to feel like a more like maintenance mode state. Um, both with, with all the stuff that we just talked about, but we've also seen, just in the last year, a number of uh, big things disappearing out of the game or from the community, and mostly talking about EDDB, 
you also have Distant World that um, that stopped. It's kind of like just one small thing after the other. We'll see. I really hope that this is just going to be a dry period for Elite and that Frontier is going to come back strong at some point. Um, maybe after all these updates. Now we are almost on update 15. We're going to talk more about that in a second, by the way. Um, I really hope Frontier is going to come back. They're going to put some love and attention back into Elite. Um, because as we've been talking about so many times, this game has so much potential. There's so much that could be done if Frontier was willing to invest the time and effort into it. But update 15 for Elite Dangerous is also just around the corner. Frontier has announced that it will be coming out on May 9th. We don't really know, well, they are targeting May 9th. It's not 100% confirmed. Anything can happen, it's like two weeks away from now. It might be moved, but they're targeting May 9th. We don't really know much about the update. The only thing we really know is the um, the new Thargoid variant that Frontier showed in the last live stream. They just showed some video clips on it and it sparked a lot of speculations, but we don't really know anything else. It kind of... It, the discussion has basically been, is this a new, like, Interceptor variant? Is this a new Scout variant? Is it something completely like a hybrid in between the two? Like, bigger than a Scout, smaller than an Interceptor kind of deal? In any way, it's going to be interesting to see how, what it is, how that's going to affect it. Um, I did post a video about it, and a lot of you guys commented that, that players have been asking for new ships for, like, months now, and now the Thargoids get new ships, but the players don't. Um, <laughs> which I actually thought was quite a funny. I, I can't really share much about Update 15. We don't know anything really. Um, I Originally, I think Update 15 was supposed to be this big re-ramp of, of one of the major features, but now we know that they have postponed that and they're going to share more information about it at the end of the year. Um, when that feature rework is going to be uh, published, we don't know. So what Update 15 contains, your guess is as good as mine at this point in time. Moving over to Star Citizen, um, last week we got update 318.2 going live, and this was originally planned to be a full wipe, and I even said, I think during one of my live streams, that once CRG says full wipe, I'd had a hard time seeing them going back to less wiping than, than they originally planned, but they have. Um, it came out, and it turns out it wasn't a, a full wipe money and uh, rank progression stayed, um, so it was only uh, ships and items you have purchased in-game that was wiped. So that is now on the live servers, you can go and play around with that. But also, uh, in a very surprising move, update 319 is now on the Evocati test servers. If you're not familiar with the release schedule of Star Citizen, Evocati is like a hand-picked select few number of people who get access to this update prior to it going on the public test server, the PTU server. Now with update 318, it stayed on the um, test servers, so Evocati and the PTU servers for quite a while before it made it into live. I'm not sure if 319 is going to stay as long on the test servers as 318 did, simply because 318 got a really bad rep. Like, it was a disaster on launch, and CRG has been working hard to try and stabilize it and make the game more playable. Uh, and everybody's just like, 318, is, it's not a great patch, it's been very unstable. I think this is one of the reasons why CRG has been pushing on getting 319 into Evocati and into the test servers as quickly as possible because they kind of want to move on from 318. Hopefully we're going to get to 319. It's going to be more stable. As far as I know, they don't have any massive like background server stuff in 319. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think we had the persistent entity streaming, which was part of 3, uh, 318, but 319 is mostly going to be like new types of missions, those kind of stuff. So hopefully when they don't do these big server server changes behind the scenes, that it's going to mean that it's going to help stabilize even more and we're going to get into a better cycle and some more stable patches um, with Star Citizen so we can begin actually getting some, some real play hours in. But at the very least, if there should be one silver lining, it is that with the persistent entity streaming that they put in, a crash is now a lot less severe than it used to be, where in the past, if you crashed, you would just basically be back in a bed and everything you've done in that play session would, well, almost all of it would be lost, right? Um, that's not necessarily the case anymore. When, a, uh, when we have a crash now, it's a lot better at recovering. Moving over to live streaming, um, the channel's gonna return back to its normal live streaming schedule for the last two weeks. There's been additional live streams because of the 100,000 celebrations. Now gonna return back to normal. 
Um, yesterday I live streamed some Everspace 2 due to popular demand. Um, because of the wipe, I decided not to go and continue the Zero to Hero playthrough, even though I technically could with money and progress, or sorry, and, and rank progression still being there. I decided not to. Um, and then I made a po post over on my uh, my community channel, ask you guys what you want, uh, and you guys voted for some Everspace, so that's what I live streamed yesterday. And that means today I'll be live streaming the number two choice on the list, which is salvaging in Star Citizen. So we're gonna go and play around with the salvage mechanics. I have a few things I want to test. I think I want to start with just doing like a simple go out to a uh, uh, to a simple like um, uh, like Gang's point, go and find some salvage, do a simple run there just to to get the whole thing started. And then I really want to go into the um, the Halo and try to do some salvaging out there because allegedly. There is some uh, some salvage to be found out there, and if we could go and do Halo salvaging, that would make it a lot more safe. Um, but of course, it depends on the spawn rate and how easy it is to find all that stuff. So we're gonna go and we're gonna test that. We're gonna play around with the uh, with some salvage gameplay on the live stream tomorrow, which will be live streamed here on YouTube and on Twitch, and it's gonna be at seven o'clock GMT, um, business as usual. I hope I'll see a lot of you guys there. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, I'll see you guys in space.